guys, welcome to part one of the renovation of my mom's ski condo. It's going to be a retro ski chalet, which allows me a lot more creative freedom and push the curve a little bit when it comes to design. A little bit about me, I get to work in designing beautiful high-end mountain homes during the day. And at night, I try to figure out how to make that same high-end look on a much more tight budget. So part one of this series is the renovations of my mom's kitchen. Now, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the before. So it was super weird in here. There were mint green walls that we painted right away. Then I came out about two years ago and painted the cabinets white and laid a subway backsplash tile. I chose to use the Gianni Marble Epoxy Kit. Um, I had used Gianni before and it didn't have the epoxy. It was kind of before that was a part of their product line. So this was a new one for me and it was a little bit intimidating because epoxy is very time sensitive, but they try to make it very, very much reasonable for the average Joe trying to figure out how to do this. They have a really good instruction manual, but I did want to change it a little bit because the way that they have the marble kit is very cool tones. And I had to put in these click in place tiles for my mom's flooring in there. That was a very important process because it's really cold in Montana. It is too cold to have tile floors. So I had to find a laminate tile and that was also a fairly user friendly. There was a learning curve with it, but it was very important because it has a little bit of cushion in it and it is warm to the touch. So it's not freezing. <laughs> so I had to design around those tiles and they're much, much darker than I would have wanted in the space. They're actually really beautiful in person. Um, they photograph fairly black, but they're more of a charcoal color and there's a very modern vibe to it. So I just wanted to make sure that my marble wasn't gonna to be too cool because my mom has this beautiful, beautiful ceiling. It's tongue and groove ceiling. And I wanted to ha incorporate those warmths, those warm tones into the marble. So I actually just used some of my own acrylic paint and painted along with the, the painting stage and I'll show you when I do it and I just painted it on there and epoxied over top of it. So first you tape off your sink and your appliances and the front of your cabinets. You just roll on the primer. I had to do two coats, it just depends on your surface. The first step in marbling is mapping out how you want the entire slab to look like. You really want it to be a slab of marble. Once you know where your lines are going to go, it's important to spray with a little spray bottle, squirt bottle that they give you, the way that you're going to put it first. So I spray first, then I add a little bit of gray, and then I kind of let it run and then dab with the brush like you see here. Then I went in with my warmer paint. Again, it was just a regular brown acrylic paint that I had. And you can see that I spray and then I dab, <laughs> and I just try to make it, I kind of bled out from where the original gray veins I put in were. And I always go over the corner like you can see here, and it just add a little bit of warmth to it. I just didn't want it to be so cold. Now the biggest thing here is I actually had a different type of marble that I wanted to put in, but my mom really wanted to have a larger vein, just a larger profile. And I do think it turned out pretty well. This is a little overview of what it looks like before I put the epoxy on. I just wanted to show you what my original plan for the marbling is. So you can see marble that is like this. It's got a lot more veins, it's a lot more intricate. And this is what I'm seeing a lot more today on Instagram and, and Pinterest and stuff like this. But my mom didn't care for it as much, so I'm a little sad. But I'll show you what my actual, actual goal was with it. The next step is the epoxy. They just give you two cans, you pour the small can into the big can, and you have three and a half minutes exactly that you need to vigorously stir this. It's very, very important. And then you just pour it over the surface and you use their foam roller to push it across. You don't wanna press, you just wanna push it all the way across and roll over the edges. It'll drip for about 45 minutes and you have 45 minutes to get all the hair and the bubbles out with tweezers. It's a very, very time specific process. But once again, this is a look at the past of where we were. And this is where we are now. It turned out beautiful, but I will tell you, it takes seven days to dry. That's right, seven days. And we have some issues because I think I did not stir vigorously enough for three and a half minutes. So if you put something warm on it, you're not supposed to put hot things on it, but when you 
put something warm on it or really heavy, it seems to indent it just a little bit. Sometimes it seems like it doesn't, it's not a permanent indentation, but other than that, it is beautiful and I'm pretty sure those are my errors and not the product's errors. Like I said, I had other plans for how I wanted to marble this. I also wanted to make a backsplash, just put it on a board and do the same epoxy treatment like this, but it was just a little too much for my mom to wrap her mind around. But just because I can't help myself, I decided to put that little sample piece I did for you up as the backsplash, just so we can see. I think it would be really fabulous. Somebody please let me do this to their house. And of course my brain is always designing so I have some really cool ideas that I want to share with you and see your reaction. What do you think I should do? Besides changing her backsplash, I think that wrapping the front of her island in a wood like this would be really beautiful. It would call attention to her beautiful ceilings and it would really warm up her kitchen in contrast to the really cool tile that I had to use on the floor. I also want to take the cabinet that's right above her microwave and make it still a cabinet but really a faux vent hood just like this. So it would function as a cabinet but still be beautiful. I feel like that design would draw your eyes all the way up to the ceilings and it would be a bigger impact in the space. So anyways, that is my part one. I really, really appreciate you guys stopping by. If you are enjoying watching this, I will be having a lot more parts, a lot more stories on my Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm going to have some reels coming out, but I um, have many more parts to this. So if you want to stay up to date and follow along, the best way to do that is to subscribe. And I appreciate anything that you do. It really, really helps me out. And I just really love to be able to share this knowledge of that you can have this high end look without spending too much money. So and the more that you can share it, the fuller my heart is going to be fuller my heart is good be anyways thank you so much for all the love um i will share my instagram handle below and remember if you want to to subscribe